I love the story of how Jesus called Peter to be his disciple. Basically Jesus is down by the shore in the Sea of Galilee and he's preaching and as he's preaching all of these crowds of people start to gather around him and the Bible suggests that he can't get any space, he's being pushed towards the water's edge. So he looks over and he sees some fishermen washing their nets beside a couple of empty boats on the shore and he has this great idea. The Bible says that stepping into one of the boats Jesus asked Simon, its owner, to push it out into the water. So he sat in the boat and taught the crowds from there. So basically he has improvised a kind of floating stage to preach from and then the Bible says that when he had finished speaking he said to Simon now go out to where it is deeper and let down the nets and catch some fish. Now this seems like a fair request but Simon is actually quite put out by it. Master Simon replied we worked hard all last night and didn't catch a thing but if you say so I'll let the nets down again. You can hear the reluctance in his voice. He's saying, we've just been out there all night, we didn't catch a thing. And if the fish aren't biting under the cloak of darkness, there's no chance in daylight. This is a waste of time. And since he's been out there all night, you have to remember that he's tired, he's probably hungry, and with no fish to sell at the market that day, it just hasn't been a good night for business either. So he's in a bad mood, he wants to go home and sleep, because he knows that he's going to have to get up and go fishing all night again later. What's more, they've just just finished washing their nets, they're all packed up. Dropping them in the water again is going to get them dirty. So you see what Jesus is doing here. Jesus is inconveniencing Peter. He is asking him to go and do something inconvenient. Now although Peter is whiny about it, he did drop his nets back in the water again. And the Bible says that this time their nets were so full of fish that they began to tear. A shout for help brought their partners in the other boat and soon both boats were filled with fish and on the verge of sinking. When Simon Peter realised what had happened, he fell to his knees before Jesus and said, Oh Lord, please leave me, I'm too much of a sinner to be around you. Peter is embarrassed that he even questioned Jesus' wisdom. He's sorry that he ever doubted this rabbi. His faith is now leveled up, it's grown. He's put his faith into action and Jesus has come through for him. This has all happened simply because he said yes to Jesus when it was inconvenient. Now Peter is going to need this increased faith because Jesus is about to ask him to take an even bigger risk. Jesus tells them, come follow me and I will show you how to fish for people. Now this new request isn't merely an inconvenience, this is something much more. Jesus is telling them not just to drop their nets, but to drop their livelihoods, their family, their home, their comfort, their security, everything that they've ever known, and to come follow this relative stranger to who knows where. Because notice that Jesus doesn't actually tell them. He doesn't give them an itinerary of where they'll be going and what they'll be doing, where they'll be staying. He doesn't lay out a roadmap. He doesn't give them any details. He just says, come follow me. And that's all. It's a leap into the unknown. Now if Peter hadn't dropped his nets into the water previously, he wouldn't have had the faith to say yes to this slightly riskier request. But because he did take that previous small leap of faith, his faith is now levelled up, it has now grown, and he now has enough to take the slightly bigger leap. So the Bible says as soon as they landed they left everything and followed Jesus. They left everything, their livelihood, their security, their comfort, they just said yes to Jesus, this teacher that they barely even knew, and went to follow him on a risky, faith-filled, crazy, unknown, wild adventure. Read the Gospels and you discover that Jesus keeps laying these uncomfortable leaps of faith in front of his disciples. 
and they keep saying yes. And every time they say yes, their faith keeps leveling up because Jesus keeps coming through for them. It keeps growing. So by Matthew 10, Jesus is ready to send them out by themselves into the towns and villages. And it says that he's sending them out as sheep amongst wolves. And he makes some scary promises to them as they go. He says, you'll be handed over to courts and flogged with whips. You'll stand trial before governors. You'll be arrested and betrayed by friends. You'll be hated, you'll be persecuted, you'll be called names. He says that you may even be killed. Now, this is scary. This is more than just inconvenience. This is more than just dropping nets into water when you're tired and hungry and want to go home. This is even more than giving up your business and your hometown to go follow a new teacher. Because if it hadn't worked out by following Jesus, then, then Peter could have returned home and picked up where he left off. But this leap of faith is something terrifying. If they say yes to this leap, then Jesus says it will mean strong persecution and possibly even death. This is the ultimate risk because it may cost them everything. But because they have taken all of those previous small leaps of faith, because they kept saying yes in the past, their faith has kept leveling up this whole time. And now they have come to a place where they're actually ready to take this leap. Of course, Jesus comes through for them yet again. They, they return home from these evangelistic missions even more excited than ever, saying, Lord, even the demons obey us when we use your name. Their faith has just kept rising because they kept saying yes, even in the face of danger. So finally, we come full circle back to the Sea of Galilee, the scene where Peter had first been called, the scene where it all began. The disciples were in trouble far away from land, for a strong wind had risen, and they were fighting heavy waves. About three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them walking in the water. When the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified. In their fear, they cried out, it's a ghost. But Jesus spoke to them at once, don't be afraid, he said, take courage, I am here. Then Peter called to him, Lord, if it is really you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. Yes, come, Jesus said. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw the strong wind and the waves, he was terrified and began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. You have so little faith, Jesus said. Why did you doubt me? When they climbed back in the boat, the wind stopped. Then the disciples worshipped him. You really are the Son of God, they exclaimed. You see what's happening here? Just a short while ago, Peter had barely had the faith to drop his nets into the water to catch some fish. Now, because he had kept saying yes to Jesus this whole time, his faith had kept leveling up to a point where he was now able to walk on the stuff. At the beginning, he wasn't even sure if this rabbi was worth giving up sleep for. Now they realize that this is the Son of God. He's worth giving up their lives for. How had their faith got to this level? Again, by these small increments. Peter just kept saying yes to Jesus. He kept being led outside of his comfort zone. He kept taking leaps when it was scary, over and over. Every time he got to a place of comfort, Jesus beckoned him on to something bigger. And within a short space of time of living by faith like this, taking these small steps, it had risen from here to here. That's what a life of faith looks like. It's a daring adventure. It's a risk-taking, wild, scary, uncomfortable, exhilarating thing. But it always comes in these small steps. Jesus is always just calling us to go just a step beyond where we are currently comfortable. And every time we think we're done and can sit down and relax because we've done enough now, we've taken enough risks, we can take it easy, Jesus comes back and says, now here's your next leap. I want you to go further. I want you to go deeper. I want you to once again do the thing you think you can't do. I want you to do the thing that you are most afraid to do. And the question is, will we keep saying yes to him, no matter the danger, no matter the risk, no matter the persecution, will we keep saying yes to Jesus? Will we let him lead us on this exhilarating adventure of faith? The example of the disciples tells us that really, this is the only way to live.
So what's your greatest fear? I, I'd say my greatest fear would be heights. Um, I didn't really like flying at all, but uh, we're away in holding a few weeks, so <laughs> we'll be back in the sky again soon. Okay. So if I used to give you a million pounds to uh, stand on top of a really high building, do you think you could conquer that fear? Aye, I'd certainly give it a try. For a million pounds? I, I don't know if I could jump out an aeroplane for a million pounds, but... What about ten million? Oh, I tell you, everyone's got a price, has it? <laughs> the, nah, maybe, oh, I tell you, that would that would be tempting. <laughs> so what is your biggest fear? Um, ants. If, if I was to give you, say, a million pounds, would you be able to hold some ants in your hand or something like that? Yeah, no problems, but that's a big fear. <laughs> okay, so what's your greatest fear, or any fear you have? I'm scared of heights. Um, so, if I was to give you a million pounds, do you think you'd be able to go up to the top of a really high building, like say up to the roof or something like that? With protection, perhaps. Um, so maybe a million and a half. A million and a half. Well, what if I was to give you ten million? Would you be able to do it? Yes, as long as I don't die. Okay, what are you afraid of? Spiders. Spiders. Um, if, if I was to give you a million pounds, would you be willing to hold a spider in your hand? for like uh, five seconds maybe? Maybe. Maybe? Is that a yes? Mm. Is there anything that you're afraid of? Yeah, spiders. <laughs> spiders. If I gave you a million pounds, would you be able to hold a spider in your hand for 10 seconds? I think I could probably work towards it, yeah. <laughs> uh, greatest fear would probably have to be snakes and maybe crocodiles. Thankfully, I've never come up against crocodiles uh, or snakes for that matter, but they, they, they do have a half of genuine fear of them, definitely. If I was to give you a million pounds, could you handle a snake? For a million pounds, I'd have to say yes. So what's your greatest fear? Um, probably flying. Flying, okay. If, if I was to give you a million pounds to get in a plane, uh, could you do it? Yes. So uh, what's your greatest fear, or what's a fear that you have? I'd say my greatest fear would be of heights. Heights. If I was to give you a million pounds, would you be able to go up to the top of a really high building? Uh, I would say as long as there's barriers around about the sides, if it was, if I had to stand near the edge, uh, I'd be torn. But possibly, possibly, but for a million though, yeah. So that's big money, isn't it? Uh, I guess yeah. I'd try and push myself. You see, everyone is afraid of something. That's not the issue here. But when a desire within you becomes greater than the fear you'll conquer it, you'll push through those fear barriers to get to that thing that you really want the most. Now God doesn't offer us a million or even 10 million to push through fear barriers to follow him. He gives us something much better and something much more valuable. He gives us himself and he gives us life. You will love living like this, I promise you. Jesus is always just on the other side of fear, telling us to have faith and to trust him, to step out of the boat and to join him on the crashing waves. So my prayer for the church and for your group is, may we crave that walk of faith with Jesus more than we fear it. May we crave Jesus above everything else. In our pursuit of him, may we push through fear barriers of men, of persecution, even of death. May we constantly be taking these leaps of faith into the unknown to follow him, wherever he may lead. If we get to that place where we desire him above all else, if we keep saying yes to him no matter what, we can expect amazing things.